welcome, welcome. I would like to welcome you to another episode of the Unpopular Podcast. This is the man, the myth, the legend, Jalen Hunter. And if you would do me a favor, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. I'm trying to reach a thousand subscribers, so anything would help. Uh, for people that didn't listen to last episode, uh, my birthday was last week. That's why I didn't drop on Wednesday. I was out of town. For people that have sent me birthday wishes, I appreciate y'all, man. It definitely mean a lot. Uh, you know, another year that God's given me, and I'm I'm ready to see what blessings he has for me. So, with that being said, congratulations to the Milwaukee Bucks for winning the NBA Finals. They won it in six games uh, against the Phoenix Suns. And, you know, it's always fun to see the talks that come out of the NBA Finals, you know. Uh, I It's... it's the biggest, one of the biggest talks is, you know, is it over for super teams? Uh, is it over for big market teams? Here's the thing. To talk about this championship, you have to talk about the 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 road that was taken from both the Phoenix Suns and the Milwaukee Bucks. Man, this was a different year. Now, now, when I say this, I'm not discrediting the championship at all. I mean, hell. If any, if if anybody could win a championship, if it was that easy, the Wizards would have fifteen of them. <laughs> um, and I'm not here to discredit, man. I'm here to give credit. This was a tough year. This is the long. First of all, the coming off of the shortest off season in NBA history. Uh, you know, it, it was tough. It was tough. Injury after injury after injury. Uh, of course, you had. The, the Brooklyn Nets formed. You still had the Lakers. Uh, it, it was tough. It was tough, man. And sh- again, shouts out, shouts out to the Bucks. Shouts out to Giannis. Another, another, another conversation that I had is, is Giannis the best player in the world? Now, in game six, in game six, no, for this entire playoffs, Giannis has been incredible. Giannis has showed up when he needs to show up. Uh, he showed up against the Boston Celtics. I mean, I mean, not the Boston Celtics. He showed up against the Miami Heat. They really stood no chance. He showed up against Brooklyn. He showed up against Atlanta. And, of course, he showed up against Phoenix. Now, game six, he finished the first player in NBA history to finish a, to have a closeout game with 50 points, 14 rebounds, and five blocks. Um, you know, the thing about Giannis is this. And I talked about this a couple episodes ago. Giannis is not, Giannis does not have a popular game. You know, Giannis is not the greatest scorer. Giannis is not the greatest shooter. He's not Kevin Durant as far as how he scores. He's not Steph Curry how he shoots. He's not James Harden with the flashy moves and the step back. He's not Kyrie the below the rim. He's not LeBron, you know, with the assists and and the, the brute force. He's not he's not the traditional player, you know? He's not the traditional star. You know, we like our stars packaged how we want them packaged. You know, and again, I talked about it last episode, but it goes back to the Tim Duncan and Kobe. We want our stars to be flashy. We want our stars to be uh, f- bigger than life. We want their game to be bigger than life. And that's what Kobe was, man. Kobe hit tough shots, one of the greatest uh, players ever. We don't like our stars quiet. We don't like our stars to have untraditional games. Like people don't, people will will will, will up Kobe and just completely forget about Tim Duncan, seeing as though Tim Duncan did almost the same exact thing outside of scoring that Kobe did. You know, when we look at today, the landscape of the league today, man, it it's it's. It's changing. And to answer, I'll say this. It, it, right now, yes, Giannis is the best player in the world because, you know, he the 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 Milwaukee Bucks got to the top of the summit and they won. And Giannis, again, the, here's the thing about Giannis, man. Giannis we've never seen anyone like Giannis ever. Ever. There has never been a player like Giannis. 
the fact that Giannis has some huge, and I mean absolutely huge deficiencies. He's not the greatest scorer or shooter. He's not the great. He he's not really good uh, free throw. Even though he came clutch at the free throw line the last game, he can't shoot a three to save his life. Some of his decision making, especially you know like his, some of his decision making, especially when he's having a bad game, is off. Um. But with all that being said, Giannis is still, bro, like, Giannis, when he has a full head of steam, he is damn near unstoppable. I mean, we'll talk about the Suns game plan in a minute, but Giannis, this is a, you know what the Bucks are going to do. And Giannis still finishes with a 50, 50 bird, 50 points, 14 rebounds and five blocks. You know, Giannis, it's not all about Giannis, but we're just talking about Giannis right now. Giannis is, he's in that category now. You know, when we talk about some of the greatest players ever, he has to be up there. I mean, he's a two-time MVP. He is a finals MVP now, final, uh, NBA champion, all-star MVP, uh, multiple all-NBA selections, defensive player of the year, multiple defensive play, uh, all all NBA, all defense selections. Like, Giannis has started... Giannis improves year after year after year, and I don't know where he lands in, you know, top whatever, but he is, he has to be talked about as, you know, some of the greats because of what he's accomplished and what he, bro, Giannis is only 26. Giannis is younger than me over here doing what he's doing, bro, he, and, and, I think the argument can be had now, is he the greatest international player ever? Now, of course, that, that brings uh, Hakeem Olajuwon, that brings Dirk Nowinski, you got Mount Ginobili, you got uh, Nikola Jokic, you got Luka Doncic. Like, there's been some incredible, incredible uh, international players, but Giannis is up there, in my opinion. I don't know if he if I'll go to say he's as great as or he's the best because I I I think, you know, you still we still have to give respect to the, you know, Hakeem Olajuwon's, but he's up there. I think right now he especially at his age and moving forward, he's better than a Dirk Nowinski. He's better than uh, you know, Mono Ginobili, you know what I mean? So <sighs> I mean, it's hard. It's hard to put into words what Giannis is, man, because we've never seen anything like Giannis. Giannis, mm, you know, You know, when we talk about when we talk about um the face of the league, it's the face of the league for a minute, ever since probably he got into the league, has been LeBron. But of course LeBron James is towards the end of his career and now you're you're starting the question is starting to be asked, who is now the face of the league? You have Kevin Durant, you have Steph Curry, you have uh, uh Giannis I will say I will say that Giannis is a a a a person that you can get like you can wrap your arms around and and actually support. And I and I know I learned that I noticed that uh I mean his personality is is he has a big personality even though he's a really private person of a personal life which I definitely champion. His personality is pretty big. And we started to see that during the NBA Finals this year. He's a person that you want to get around. You know, he's he's he. I'm not gonna say he's against super teams, but he's not one of those players that want to get up and just go to a different team and and, and it's stacked. And even though, he, and that's what he said. But going into this finals, I was rooting hard for Chris Paul, man. I was like, yo, this is Chris Paul's moment, man. Finally, after 16 years, finally getting to the NBA Finals. This has got to be his moment. And then slowly but surely, I was like, wait, man. I kind of 
kind of want to see. I kind of want to see Giannis win this jump. Like I was rooting for Giannis. That's how like Giannis. He's he's really personable. I don't know if he's the face of the league yet because I mean LeBron's still there, but. I will say this. The league is in really good hands, man. The league is in really good hands. You know, Steph Curry's in his 30s. LeBron's definitely in his 30s. KD's in his 30s. Um, The next players, the next, you know, people to take the rings once they're gone is, I mean, Giannis is up there. Luka, John Morant, Trey Young, like Nikola Jokic. Like, it's, the league is in really good hands, man. The league is in really good hands. And... I think Giannis can be the next face of the league. Of course, we need to see what happens with KD and and and, and Curry and stuff like that. But Giannis is Giannis to me is a de- is definitely a top five, if not no, you know no, forget that. Giannis is the best player in the league until further notice. Giannis is the best player in the league. Yeah, he, right now he's better than LeBron. He's better than Steph. He's better than KD, and it's while he doesn't have a lot of what they have, they don't have a lot of what he has. Steph can't. Steph one is not the best defender, and he can't just relentlessly, relentlessly go at you the entire game, bro. Giannis was gassed at the end of the game, and and I was looking up like, yo, he is killing the 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 Suns. He he can't. LeBron James doesn't have it anymore. Not saying he's 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 garbage, but LeBron James doesn't have that relentlessness relentlessness that Giannis has at this point. KD, while KD can still score on anybody and one of the greatest scores ever, he can't get to the rim and d- doesn't have that strength like Giannis does. Like all these players are great, man, but. Right now is is Giannis's time. Like I said, he he improves and gets better year after year after year. And while he's not the most flashy player, he's not the most you know like he's not the he's not Steph, he's not KD as far as flash. He is up there, and you have to respect his game. If not, you're gonna get fifty putting your head. And I'm not saying that Phoenix didn't respect him, but he's just different. He is different. And, it, again, and I, I know I was just talking about Giannis, but let's talk about the rest of the Bucks, man. We have to give a shout-out to Chris Middleton. Chris Middleton came, look, game six. Game six had everything go wrong for the Bucks outside of Giannis. Chris Middleton couldn't hit the side of a barn most of the game. Drew Holiday, he was playing garbage offensively. Brooke Lopez was, I totally forgot he was in the game most of the time. P.J. Tucker finished yet another game with 36 minutes and zero points. Like, it was just everything that could go wrong outside of Giannis for the Bucks went wrong. The thing is, and this is why I respect now, I'm not saying he's a superstar because he's not in my opinion. This is why I do respect Chris Middleton. Because if you look at this at the at the Phil, uh the Heat series, if you look when he when they went against Brooklyn and when it when they went against Atlanta, Chris Middleton hits the big shots. He can he can be going having an awful game. They're still going to trust him to hit the big shots. And a lot of times he hits those big shots. He hit the big shot in game six. He hit uh big shots especially game what game seven and game six uh of the Brooklyn series he had a couple big shots against Atlanta like Chris Middleton while he's not the consistent score that he should be and could be he does hit the big shots and shouts out to him man shouts out to Drew Holiday even though he was playing god awful offensively the 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 series turned first and foremost the 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 Bucks won four straight, but the series turned once they put Drew Holiday on Devin Booker. No 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 I'm sorry. Once they put Drew Holiday on Chris Paul. Once they put Drew Holiday on Chris Paul, that that disrupted the flow for Phoenix. You know Drew Holiday is a bigger 
bigger body than than you know and 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 it's quick enough to keep up with Chris Paul and then when they put Drew Holiday on Devin Booker we know what happened there with the strips and everything it was it was a you know it was a it was a gr- it was a bad performance offensively for uh the Bucks outside of Giannis but they did what they were supposed to do Outside of score, they did what they were supposed to do. Chris Middleton, you're there to hit big shots. Yeah, you can go, you you can you can be off all game, but you, we need you for the big shots, and he was there for that. Drew Holiday, we would like for you to score, but we need you to 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 slow down Chris Paul. We need you to slow down Devin Booker. He did that. Giannis, just go be honest. He gives you fifty. Like I went into this series, I thought I knew, I didn't know because anything can happen, but I thought. That the Bucks were the better team. The Bucks, the Bucks were the. I mean, Giannis, Chris Middleton, Drew Holiday, uh, PJ Tucker, Brooke Lopez. You had um, Pat Connington, who was who's one of the better offensive rebounding guards. Brent Forbes, if he played, like you had. Bobby Portis was huge. I think he had like sixteen points in Game Six. Like you had the better team. Now, the Suns were on a roll, of course, after beating the Lakers and after beating the Nuggets and after beating the Clippers. But the Bucks had the better team. This was the Bucks year. I, the only – look, and this is well, this is why I think the Bucks are definitely elated, and this is why the Suns have to be kicking themselves in the butt because this was the year. Everything lined up for both of these teams. Everything lined up for both of these teams to win it. It's just who was going to grab it. For the Bucks, you didn't have to, you know, uh, feed, feed, last year, of course, you should have beat Miami, but, you know, the Bucks aren't really a, a bubble team. And, of course, you got your revenge there. You did. You beat Goliath pretty much, which was the Brooklyn Nets. Because of, you know, injuries to James Harden, he was hampered, and Kyrie. You didn't have to see... You didn't have to see Brooklyn, uh, not Brooklyn. You didn't have to see Philly, which I think Philly matches up with uh, with the Bucks perfectly because of their size. You had to go against the undersized and overachieving Atlanta Hawks. You get them out the way, and you dodge a huge bullet with a hyperextended knee from Giannis. Giannis hyperextended, he, bro. He was back in a week, playing like eh, ain't nothing happened. For Phoenix, Anthony Davis gets hurt. You beat the Lakers. You go up against the Denver Nuggets. Jamal Murray's not there. Their their best player or best scorer. He's not there. You beat them. Clippers. Kawhi Leonard's not there. You beat them. It's like the 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 stars aligned for both teams. It was just who was gonna grab it, and it was the it was the Milwaukee Bucks, man. And shouts out to them, man. Shouts out to them. Like I, you know, it I, is there. They're they're at the top of the mountain. Do I think now? Let me say. Do I think that they can repeat? Uh, they can repeat. But again, I think it's going to be ten times harder next year. Because again, I don't. You know, Anthony Davis is going to be back healthy. Uh, LeBron James, you know, get some time to rest. We're going to see what Golden State does with the uh, lottery picks and if they're going to trade James Wiseman, if they're going to get a star, not to mention Clay Thompson and, and Draymond Green and, and Steph Curry is going to be back healthy. Of course, in the in the West, in the the East, you, you have Brooklyn. You, they still have Kyrie and, and, and James Harden with KD. You have Philly. Are they going to get it together? Like, there's a lot of Boston. Is Boston gonna make a swing at at at, at Damian Lillard? There's a lot. There's a lot to goes into next year. Of course, that needs to be figured out, and we need to see. But you know, the Bucks, the Bucks are a good team, and the Bucks to me are a team that can most definitely repeat. But I, I don't know if they will. I'm just saying, congratulations now for you know bringing bringing a title back to Milwaukee which they have not seen in 50 years. I mean, last time they won Kareem Abdul-Jabbar was called Lou Alcindor and they had Oscar Robinson. So, 
which is which is also a, a big reason why this is a, a huge and a great accomplishment for Giannis and the Bucks because like like Giannis said, man, it's this is this has been pretty much the era of the super teams. You had the 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 Heat with LeBron and them. You have Steph Curry and the Golden State Warriors with Kevin Durant. Um, the late well, I'm not gonna say the Lakers are a super team, but you know great players as far as ad and lebron coming together like this this has been the era where players group up together to try to win and the fact that most of the players that the bucks acquired the bucks have you know aren't known as big level players outside of Giannis is is a testament man and this it was a it was this 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 championship was won throughout the entire like it it was won through the front office because we knew it was big when it, in fact I said it back when it, when it happened getting Drew Holiday for the Bucks was huge getting PJ Tucker for the Bucks was huge because you need someone to slow down the guards and you need someone like the Bucks they I I felt they were missing pieces offensively because they needed someone outside of Chris Milton and, and Giannis to score, but they also were missing defense, especially at the perimeter position. And when you get a Drew Holiday, who's probably one of the most underrated defenders of all time, and you get P.J. Tucker, which has a really good game, even though he played 36 minutes and plus zero points, but his presence was felt. Like, this, 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 this championship was – the Bucks won this. They didn't. They didn't just fall in their laps. The Bucks won this uh, championship. So shouts out to the Bucks um, for winning the NBA Finals in six games. <sighs> Let's move over to the Phoenix Suns. First and foremost, uh, congratulations to the Phoenix Suns for making it to the NBA Finals. Nobody saw this coming. I mean, just two years ago, they had one of the worst, worst records in the NBA in NBA history. Honestly, and you get Monty Williams, who's an incredible coach. You go oh, uh, eight and zero in the bubble, uh, still don't make the playoffs. However, and and of course you acquire Chris Paul. But I mean, nobody thought they were going to make it to the NBA Finals, but they did. And again, like I said before, the the stars just aligned for Phoenix, man. Like they. They probably and and I know a lot of people is gonna say it because I thought it too a little bit, but it's like damn the first team that was kind of pretty much completely healthy outside of Defensenzo not playing, which would have been big. <laughs> this is the first team that's pretty much completely healthy, or their star, or one of their stars are, are, are all healthy, and you lose. Like I just it. <sighs> It, it it sucks for Phoenix, man, because again the stars align for Phoenix, just like the stars align for the Bucks. It was again when you go up against a team, and when you go up against the Lakers with no Anthony Davis, when you go up against Denver Nuggets with no Jamal Murray, when you go and Nicole Jokic gets ejected the last game, when you go up against the Clippers with Kawhi Leonard, their best player being out, and it's 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 pretty much not to mention you have Devin Booker playing incredible the entire entire playoffs like it's you got to win that series man now let's talk about their stars let's first talk about Chris Paul because I was we were we were giving Chris Paul praises upon praise which he deserved I mean 16th year in the league he deserved it you know he deserved the praise now, with the praise, you have to be you have to be fair. You have to be fair with Chris Paul. Chris Paul had a god awful series. He had a good game one and game two. Mm, he had a great game one, an okay game two, and a, a pretty okay game six. But from games three to five, he was horrible. He was turning the ball over like crazy. He couldn't shoot the ball. He wasn't defending a soul. He just looked old. He looked bad. He looked, Chris Paul looked like the moment was too big for him. And, of course, this was his first final. Hell, outside of Jay Crowder, this was everyone's first finals in the, with the uh, Phoenix Suns. But it, it just, it, Chris Paul was, was awful. Chris Paul was a big reason why they lost. 
I'm not saying he was the only reason, but he was a big reason why he lost. Because games three to game five, he was horrible. He was a liability for the team. Then we move over to Devin Booker. Devin Booker had an incredible playoffs. I mean, he had a 40-point triple-double against uh, the Clippers. He was huge. I think he scored like a 40-plus point game against the Lakers. Like, he was huge. The problem with Devin Booker, though, is when they needed him the most in the finals with Chris Paul not playing well and and and. And it just it was just not looking good. They needed Devin Booker to shine, and Devin Booker didn't. Devin Booker had a 40, what, 42-point game. That was game five. Game five, and of course, what's his name? CP3 was playing god-awful. And of course, Devin Booker had the huge turnover in game five. But, um, yeah, it, it was, you know what it was, man? They, I was waiting for the Suns to look like the team that this is their first finals. And they, or this is, this is their first playoffs. Cause most of the Suns, you know, their first time in the playoffs. And of course, CP3 first time in the finals. So I was like, I'm looking for them to, I'm waiting for the game that they're going to look like fresh. They're going to look like, you know, wide eyes, deer and headlights. Like I was looking for the game where they were going to look bad. And unfortunately it came in the playoffs. I mean, Mikel Bridges, no, yeah, Miles Miles Mikel Bridges Miles Bridges Miles Bridges just he disappeared. Um Cameron Johnson disappeared a lot of those games. Cameron Payne, who I deemed the sixth man of the playoffs, he disappeared a lot of times. It was just like I don't know, it's like the team just you know, is the team the team it's 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 a slippery slope. When I say the team, a team, of course, when you're built around stars like like Devin Booker and Chris Paul, this the team is so perfectly built around them. They go as they go. You know, usually you go as a star goes. Um, and when your stars, which is Devin Booker and CP3, weren't playing well, it reflected on the team. And this the the Bucks really exposed the fact that. The Suns really don't have another player outside Devin Booker that can continuously put the ball on the ground and get you a get you a bucket. We thought Chris Paul was that, but Chris Paul is, I mean, he's up there in age, and it showed because, of course, you have a great first game, and every single game after that, it was a decline. And it's it sucks, man. It sucks. And, and then we'll get – we have to get to – you know, we – a lot of people want to want to want to throw blame and shade at Chris Paul, rightfully so. He deserves the amount that he gets. Uh, a lot of people want to throw blame at Devin Booker, amount that he gets. A lot of people want to throw blame at uh, Monty Williams. He never really changed up his defensive strategy. He was like, you know, <laughs> which I I understand. I understand to an extent because the 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 strategy to get them there is yo, we're playing one on one, you know, guard up. If someone beats us, they beat us. But we're playing solid one-on-one defense and going into the going into the finals. But both the Bucks and the and the Phoenix Suns were number one and two defensively. So I understand it working. But <laughs> Monte Williams did absolutely no adjustments, bro. Like he he was just he he was he did no defensive adjustments. No real offensive adjustments. And, and and Mike Budenholzer didn't do a lot of adjustments either, but his biggest adjustment, like Jalen Rose said, was, yo, give the ball to Chris Middleton at the end of the game. Don't – I mean, we, we can't really sit and worry about what Chris Middleton is going to do the first – I mean, the few – like the most of the game. But Chris Middleton is our closer. And give him the ball and trust him at the end of the game because we saw a lot of times Drew Holiday was trying to shoot – uh, at the end of the games, we saw a lot of times Giannis was trying to do too much at the end of the games. Give the ball to Chris Middleton, and and if we lose, we lose going out like that. But uh, uh yeah, man, Cremonte Williams didn't make any adjustments, and of course, lastly, DeAndre Ayton. DeAndre Ayton, damn, DeAndre Ayton looked scared. He looked like the moment was too big for him. He looked incredible the first two games. But from game three to six, DeAndre Ayton looked horrible. Like, absolutely horrible. And 
that's see that and, and the thing is you can put DeAndre Ayton on Anthony Davis and Anthony Davis is injured. You can put DeAndre Ayton on Nikola Jokic because Nikola Jokic isn't as mobile as Anthony Davis. Uh and isn't he's not as mobile as DeAndre Ayton. While yes, he he's the MVP of the league this year, Nikola Jokic isn't, you know, isn't the most mobile player and he isn't gonna bing 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 you to death. That get that strategy ain't gonna work going up against Giannis, who is a freight train going left and right, man. And Giannis was given this man. I mean, Giannis had three games with 40, 40 or more plus forty or more points against against DeAndre. Yo, Giannis was destroying DeAndre Aiden. Like it didn't look good at all. And a lot of that was was of course the the game plan for Monty Williams and everything, but it's like, and the thing is, Monty Williams. I I remember the few games he was throwing everyone at him, but Jan, of course, DeAndre was doing the best against Giannis because his height. But Giannis was killing everyone. He was killing Miles Bridges. He was killing Cam Johnson. He was killing every single person. Uh, Jay Crowder. Every single person that. That he, that Monty Williams put on Giannis, he was destroying them. Giannis was, and I told you guys this. Giannis was the best player in the series, leaps and bounds, and he proved it. And again, I now it's easy for me to say that they're not going to make it again next year because I didn't see them making it this year. But again, it's I definitely don't. I, I'm not going to say this. I think it's going to be a lot, a lot harder for them to make it next year, seeing as though you're, we're expecting a healthy Golden State. We're expecting a healthy Clippers. We're expecting a healthy um, Lakers. We're expecting – and we're expecting some big moves from these players – or from these teams. So I, I, don't, I don't see the Phoenix making it again. I don't see Chris Paul – unless he goes to, like, maybe a Lakers or something. I don't see him – making it to a another another NBA finals and which which is why I said on Twitter I and mean, I hope he cherishes this moment cuz I don't think he's ever going to make it again seeing as though the you know he's getting older uh he looked pretty old in a lot of those games in the finals and they called a lot of breaks a and, and and I mean nobody wants to say it but we'll say they called a lot of breaks that is the Phoenix Suns they called a lot of breaks going into this into this NBA finals and they just didn't capitalize so um, yeah, it's going to be hard for, now I do think moving forward, Devin Booker will get better. And, and of course the role players will get better and we'll see what happens with Chris Paul. I know he's searching for like a th another three year deal. And if the Suns don't want to give it to him, I know, uh, I think they said like the Lakers or, or New York or something could be big suitors for him. Who knows? Um, I'm just saying this was the year. This was the year. This and I said this all playoffs, man. This was the year. That's why I mean teams like Brooklyn is going to be good. I mean, you have three pretty much top arguably top 10 players in the league. They're going to be good. But this is why it was the year for Philly cuz you didn't have to go against a, a a Brooklyn Nets team. This is why this was the year for Atlanta cuz you already slayed one of the Goliaths in in uh in Philly, like this is why this was the year for the Bucks, and they captured it. So, this was the year for Phoenix. Anyone coming out the West, honestly, because the West is such a gauntlet. I mean, you know, the Brooklyn or Clippers got Dallas out the way, so you didn't have to go see Luca. Uh, Kawhi hurt. Like it, this was the year, and Brooklyn and and um, Phoenix did not capitalize on it. So, I don't know if they'll be back next year. And it kind of it, it kind of goes into the next topic actually, which is um, the Lakers. Reports are coming out saying the Lakers are pushing for a, a veteran point guard, and the two players that we're hearing a lot of is Chris Paul and Russell Westbrook. Here's the thing. I don't know if either of them would work for the Lakers now. But out of Chris Paul and out of West, Russell Westbrook, of course, I would go with Chris Paul for the Lakers only because Russell Westbrook is is a player that needs the ball in his hands. And so is Chris Paul. But Westbrook more than Chris Paul, in my opinion. And 
I, I just feel like the, the Lakers can do a lot better or will do a lot better with Anthony Davis, with LeBron James and Chris Paul than with Russell Westbrook. While I do think that Russell Westbrook at this point is a better athlete than Chris Paul, and I think he's been a better athlete his entire career, but I think Chris Paul would be better for the Lakers. It's just I don't think either of them would be good for Lakers. And because for Chris Paul, the reason why um, – the reason why, to me, he worked so well with the Suns is because they're a young team. They're a young team that was willing to, to hear him out. Not to mention, let me say this. The reason why he worked so well with the Suns and didn't work all that well with the Rockets is because the, Sun is, the Suns are a young team, and they're, they're open and willing to hear him talk. Hell, a lot of people saying, you know, all Chris, you know, Chris Paul balk, balks, barks a lot. But he knows what he's talking about. And for veterans, a lot of people don't want to hear that, especially if you're not the best player on the team. Or if your best player is young, like a Devin Booker, they can take that. Like, you know, he's here to make me better. But when your best player is a James Harden and you're over here trying to be exude dominance and James Harden is a lot better than you, nobody's trying to hear that. When your best player is LeBron James or Anthony Davis, nobody you pretty much go to the third best player. Nobody's trying to hear that. Nobody's trying to hit that. And I think that can definitely ruffle some feathers and ruffle the, the locker room. And ain't nobody trying to, like, come on. Not to mention the fact that you're going you're going to a team or from a team that's incredible at three-point shooting. Like I said, uh, Miles Bridges is great at Cam Johnson's good at three-point shooting. Jay Crowder's good at three-point shooting. Devin Booker's good at three-point shooting. To a team that is god-awful. At three-point shooting. Alex Caruso sucks at three-point shooting. Kyle Kuzma, no. Dennis Schroeder, no. Which which those players are probably going to have to get traded. Uh, Anthony Davis, not reliable. LeBron James, no. So it's like Chris Paul can flourish because you're passing to mostly shooters. And then you go to the Lakers, you're, you're passing to mostly slashers. And that's just not – I don't think that's going to work. So, you know, we'll see how that goes. But um, I think that – I don't. I don't know if Russell Westbrook's going to be on the move. In fact, unless like you, you, you really get a good haul for him. If I were the Wizards, I would not trade Russell Westbrook un- unless you know you have something big. And for the for CP3, I don't know why you would leave Phoenix outside of the money. Um, if Phoenix isn't trying to pay, then hey, I get go where go where they'll pay. But. If, if you're trying to win a championship or trying your best, I would stay with the team that you just got to the finals with or go to a better team like a – like. I don't know if the Lakers – I mean, I know the Lakers have a better players than LeBron and AD, but I don't know if they're a better team than Phoenix. So I think it's going to be an interesting, uh, interesting offseason. It's going to be an interesting offseason, and, of course, moving forward – We'll talk about it throughout the off season, but we'll, we'll see what what moves be made or what moves will be made. So, moving forward, I you know I purposely, I purposely not talked about the NFL for more than like a month or so because the NFL season. I mean, it was it was the middle of the NBA playoffs. Uh, a lot was going on, and of course, a lot of the media pundits are still going to focus on NFL, which which makes sense. I mean, the NFL is king in the, in the United States. Um, But a topic, two topics, actually, but we'll talk about one right now. A topic came to, you know, breaking news that has to be discussed. Now, as we know, the world is trying to get back to reality or no, trying to get back to some type of normalcy because of COVID. And the NFL have already has already come out and said now, of course, vaccines are going out. Um. And a lot of businesses are making it mandatory to get a vaccine. One of those businesses, which is the NFL, is not making it mandatory. Um, And, of course, the NFL has already come out and said most of the most, if not all of the teams are going to have full stadiums. And there have been players uh, most recently, DeAndre Hopkins, but there have been multiple players. I mean, D-Hop. Uh, Cole Beasley, there's been multiple players that have come out and pretty much said that they're against the vaccine and they're not going to get it. Now, people want to know how I feel about the situation. Um, here's the thing. It's two, two, it's, it's, I have two, two statements. Two statements are very true in my opinion. One, you can't force someone 
to do something they don't want to do. You can't force someone to put something in their body that they don't want to put something in. Um, you, you can't force that on people. That's to me, that's the whole free will thing. Like you can't you can't force things on people. However, to me, let's just speak about football, right? You're playing in arguably the most the most contact sport in the world in the in in the United States. You're going up against people from all walks of life. Hell, there's going to be you have equipment managers, you have coaches, you have so many people on the sideline. And of course, you're going to have a full stadium of people. Um, now, of course, you can be strong. Or, or players and, and, and can be stronger because they're younger and blah, blah, blah. But what about the people that you'll come in contact with that have underlining health concerns? You know what I mean? And the, th- the last thing I want to do is give someone COVID that may not be as strong as me or get COVID from somebody that's not that I'm not stronger than and then it just takes me out. Like that, that's the last thing I want. So I understand the hesitancy of getting the vaccine. You know what I mean? And to me, I don't I don't agree with forcing someone to get it just for employment. Uh, But I do think it is selfish not to get it. Because, again, and people say, you know, you don't know what the government's doing. You don't know what they're putting in your bodies, bro. These are the same people, the same people that have phones getting tracked same people that have hot box sessions with people that they don't know what they did before they met them or before they seen them like you're having hot box sessions with people that you don't even know their last name they're the same people that eat fast food and i i'm not i eat fast food so i'm not shunning but but you don't know what they put in the food so you're over here worried about a vaccine which can save a lot of people and that's the thing the biggest thing is, it's for other people, not really for yourself. Now, it helps you, but it's for other people. And it's like, if I can play my part, you know what I mean? Now, I may, I, and I'm not going to lie, I was skeptical at first. I was skeptical at first with the vaccine. I'm like, yo, I don't, I don't really know. I'm not really one to just welcome putting something in my body that I don't know. I, res- I understand the hesitancy. And I was, and yes, I am fully vaccinated. I still understand the hesitancy, and I still was hesitant after the second time. You know what I mean? Like, I still don't know what's in my body, but they're telling me that it works. It is what it is. But I'm not. I'm trying to play my part. I, I have women that live with me, my, 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 my family, uh, kids, lo- little kids. The last thing I want to do, and, I, and of course, I work in media, so I don't want to bring I, – I, I, I interact with people from all walks of life. I don't know what they do at home. I don't know how they live their lives. So the last thing I want to do is have COVID in me, and <laughs> I I fight it off. But because I didn't get the vaccine, I give it to my little niece, and then she just she, – she gets taken. Like, I don't – I can't do that, and I'm not going to do that. So – for the NFL, man, it's 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 just it's 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 tough because it's like to me again. I don't think that you should force players, but players also have, also have to accept. All right, look, if you get COVID, yo, your team can forfeit these. And I know the an article came out saying that you know the NFL will do forfeits. Your team can forfeit games, which can cost you money, which can cost you uh, playoff position, like. Of course, be careful with it and and mask up and everything. But, you know, like if you're not going to get the vaccine, you also have to do you also have to understand what comes with that. Um, And, you know, there there's been multiple players that have caught in hell caught that have caught COVID. Hell, Lamar Jackson caught COVID. Like, you know, what I'm saying, like the last thing you want to do is catch COVID at the at the worst time. And affect a whole bunch of people. Hell, you remember what? It was Tennessee. Like, COVID ran rapid. And, and it was uh, the Ravens. COVID ran rapid through the entire team. And it cost them playoff position. Now, of course, they both made it to the playoffs. But it cost them some games. So, you know, it's it's it, it's weird. And we'll see how it goes, man. We'll see how it goes. We'll see. 
what comes of it. So, but I'm not, again, I'm not one to force. I don't think you should force someone to have to take something uh, that they don't want to take. However, I also, for the people, like, I, I'm not, I think it's, I think it's a little selfish not to take it. Now, I don't judge anybody. I mean, you do what you do. But I I then have to move accordingly around someone that doesn't want to. Like, well, okay, well, I have to chill. You know, I'm not going to say not be around them. But, again, and you're playing in a contact sport. Like, you have to rub skin with people. And, and, and of course, people breathing on you. Like, you don't know. You don't know. So, that's all I'm saying, man. I just hope everyone stays healthy and stays safe. That's it. Moving forward. So the the opening ceremony uh, for the Olympics happened yesterday. And, um, yeah, man, the Olympics on the way. And the biggest talk is should, should we even be doing the Olympics? Uh, because there's a huge outbreak of COVID in Tokyo right now. Now, I know that they're doing a bubble style. Like, I know for the opening ceremony there was no one in the stands and there's not going to be anyone in the stands for all the events um and of course i think that they there's curfews and we know about the wooden beds and stuff like that uh it's i mean it's happening <laughs> it's happening that's that's just what it is it's happening uh they just said through caution to the wind i guess and say hey this is what it is and it, it'll be kind of tough to cancel the olympics so close to it um Especially seeing as though these Olympics were already pushed back because they were supposed to be last year, but due to COVID, you know, it, it got pushed back. So I understand it not it not getting canceled, um, and just I, just just stay safe. I hope that none of the players, for, or I hope that none of the athletes in any country gets uh gets COVID. Um, and they're hot. There have been players uh for team usa there's been players all over the place that have you know i'm not gonna say just caught COVID, but they have been in 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 health protocol like we saw bradley bill he had to exit team usa because he was in health protocol but he is healthy so um yeah so it's, it's happening so congratulations you know shouts out to team usa everyone i want everyone from usa to dominate and i think that you know a lot of the sport we will like i don't see of course, now, Team USA soccer did lose in the front. I think they lost to Sweden, like 3-0. But, you know, Team USA soccer is usually better than the rest. Team USA basketball, I mean, you have the best player, in my opinion, in, like, in, in all the Olympics right now, in Kevin Durant. And then, of course, you have Damian Lillard and everything. Women's, you have Sue Bird, Brianna, you, know, you have Brianna Stewart, uh, Aja Wilson. He, he, Simone Biles is going to be killing the Olympic or the the gymnastics. Of course, we have track and field. Uh, it it, it I, I'm of course rooting for Team USA because I, I live in the United States, but and I think that we have the advantage. So, uh, you know, congratulations, and I hope that they stay safe. There's really no point of talking about should they cancel the Olympics or should they cancel it because it's happening. Like this is the this is what's coming. This is where we're at. So, you know, you got to do what you got to do. So, shouts out to them. Moving forward. So the biggest news in college football actually is Texas and Oklahoma petition to get to go to the uh go to the SEC. Currently in the Big Twelve. Um I will say this. This is big news definitely for the Big Twelve, um, more than it is the SEC. And I understand going to the SEC what it means for Oklahoma and Texas as far as money generated as far as fans as far as tv deals i I get that i understand money wise why the oklahoma sooners and the texas longhorns would want to go to sec i will caution with this be careful what you ask for because yes you will get more revenue more students probably more money you get that however if you want any chance and i mean any chance of going to uh, the playoffs that I'm not going to say it's not going to happen, but it's drastically different in the sec than the big 12. Like when you got, when you, when your gauntlet has to, you have to go through Auburn, Alabama, 
Mississippi State, Texas A&M. Uh, that's a little different from than going against Oklahoma State, uh, Texas or TCU. Like that's a little different. It's a little different. Now I will say this: if the big, if this goes through. And the Big 12, like, the, I don't know if the Big 12 will be able, of course, it's going to survive. There's still teams in the Big 12. But that's going to be tough, man, because the, the two biggest teams in the Big 12, football-wise, is Oklahoma and Texas. And you losing them for the SEC, and, of course, we already know how dominant the SEC usually is in football. Like, that's, that's going to be tough, man. That's going to be tough. Bounce back. Now, again, the SEC will be just fine with or without Oklahoma and Texas. Uh, I think Texas, of course, and Oklahoma will be just fine if they stay in the Big 12. But, of course, I understand revenue-wise why they would want to go to the SEC. So I just think that if this happens with the Big 12, man, it's it's going to be a killer blow, bro. Killer blow. I don't think that's gonna the the the, the conference is gonna di- be dispelled, but I do think that it kind of puts them in the same realm as like a a Pac-12 as far as there's outside of maybe Oregon, Stanford, and and Washington, it's really a long shot. Maybe at USC from time to time. It's really a long shot for any Pac-12 team to make it to the college football playoffs because Pac-12 they just don't generate the same amount of fans generate i mean most of their games are late at night like it's it's tough and the big 12 is going to be in the same i mean at this point what baylor um tcu oklahoma state is your best teams and none of those are even close in my opinion to uh mississippi state or texas a&m like it's going to be tough so we'll just see what comes of it so and lastly, uh, I mean, it's it's still early, but the the Packers have had a had a tough a tough off season. Of course, we know about the Aaron Rodgers and how that hasn't really that relationship hasn't mended itself. Um, report came out saying that the Packers offered offered um, Aaron Rodgers like a two year extension, which would make him the highest paid player. But it's like, why would you want to do that if you know? two years and the dude just came off an MVP and one game away from being in the Super Bowl. And the latest report saying now Devontae Adams, their best wide receiver, is uh, they're not in a good place as far as his, his extension. You know, they've been trying to work an extension for him and, you know, the extension talks have now been off and it's I don't, I'm not going to speculate that he wants out, but it's looking like you're going into the season and you may not have your number one quarterback or your number one wide receiver. So it's, it's going to be tough, man. It's going to be tough. And I, I just, again, the league, the, the, the league is not, it's the, the, the Packers aren't good enough to go, go through this turmoil right now with these two players. And I'll be different. If it was like a, maybe a lineman and a defense, but no, you have the, reigning MVP of the league and a top five. So a lot of people would even say top three wide receiver in the game, not playing like this. No, especially when you have, you see the, the Rams retooled, you see the, the, the Seattle, Seattle Seahawks. Um, of course the Cardinals and the moves they made. Hell, you can even look in your division, Justin Fields, uh, with the Bears, of course, we know the, of course, Stefan Diggs and the, and the, well, not Stefan Diggs. Of course, we know about the Vikings. Like, this is not the time to have turmoil, especially in the NFC. And, of course, we didn't even talk about the NFC South. We didn't talk about the reigning Super Bowl champions, the, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and, of course, the Saints. And it, it just ain't the time. This ain't the time for this. So, the Packers better get together or you will lose. And And, and hear me now. If you lose a player like Devontae Adams and you lose a player like Aaron Rodgers, there ain't no coming back from that. There's not a haul that you will get for these players. Do not do not get it confused. Do not get it confused. You you need them. You need them. That's all I'll say about that. And there you have it, man. That has been today's episode of the Unpopular Podcast. I appreciate you guys. If you want an Unpopular Podcast shirt, hoodies, long sleeves, sweaters, you know, joggers the link is in the description below 
I have multiple colors, multiple designs, multiple styles. Go check it out. Go get your merch today. Also, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. I'm trying to get to 1,000 subscribers, so anything will definitely help. I appreciate you guys. I love you guys. And until next time, much love. Mm-hmm.